quiz. Name the marine mammal that is a herbivore related to the elephant has a cow in its name probably from a mythological story related to the city of Dwarka and is critically endangered in India. Only an estimated 250 odd individuals are surviving in India. The answer is Dugong or the sea cow. Stumped, I was till I heard this story of conservation of Dugong. Let us hear this fascinating tale from Dr. K. Sirokumar of Wildlife Institute of India. Hi everyone, uh, today I am very happy to share the one of the very successful conservation story of uh, sea cow, uh, uh, we call them as a dugong. Uh, this is the animal we able to trying to recover the species from their extinction in India. And uh, this is the story tells a lot about the conservation uh, strategy which uh, the government of India or a state government as well as the people of India follows it. So you may be aware that India has a wonderful wildlife, rich in biodiversity, uh, but very big population. There are about uh, 1.4 billion of people living in this country with such an enormous number of people. Uh, still, we are able to conserve our biodiversity. That is because of that the tradition which we have been following it for uh, since age. So even if you go to the middle of the Delhi where you can find a oak club where thousands of flamingos are living there. So that is the beauty of the country. So traditionally Indians are known to protect their nature that helps uh, helped us actually conserving our biodiversity uh, till now. But coming to the marine system, uh, what's happened in the marine system uh, we people uh, always look at the marine system as the commercial uh, opportunity. Uh, everybody looked into the marine biodiversity as the commercial product, which can be harvested or which can be exploited for food or other economic benefit. That's what we have been doing. It. And uh, even our scientific community also, we have a, a two, three hundred years of uh, beginning from the British period to the so many research institutions uh, established in our country that we have very good scientists, excellent scientists in the past who studied uh, about marine biodiversity, but unfortunately most of the studies actually appreciated the commercial value of the marine biodiversity instead of uh, also recognizing their ecological role. So that was the reason why it's happened in our country uh, we started losing so many species or the population of the many species in our country and also many species which occur in our country yet to be identified. We know there are larger species uh, that have been identified but we believe that there are another 50 percentage of species which occurs in Indian water which we don't know because in Indian water you know again if we talk about that we have a 7,500 kilometer long coastline and uh, we have a very two beautiful group of islands in either side, Arabian Sea as well as in Bay of Bengal. So all those things with uh, such a vast EZ zone in our country accommodated a very rich marine resources in our country. But a lot of problem, a lot of problem, but somehow we are not able to uh, address those issues at least two decades before. But now scenario has changed in our country people started giving attention to the marine biodiversity which that they deserve now because people understood the value of the marine resources because uh, there are about 200 million people of India directly related to the uh, marine resources for their livelihood. Such a very, very important uh, resources are now getting the attention of everybody, whether it is a politicians, bureaucrats, or a researchers, or whoever, okay? And also people also realize that, that is what uh, the marine research and marine conservation program in our country, what uh, significant uh, enhanced, 
uh, meant in the last, uh, I can say about eight decades later. Now, one of those things, there are many program we have. It. We were very successful in uh, taking care of our sea turtles. They talk about the classical example in Orissa sea turtle conservation where uh, forest department of Orissa along with uh, several communities with the international uh, some of the civil society worked very well and uh, they could be able to protect their habitat, they're concerned the species when they come for a mass nesting, all those things. We have Chilka Development Authority, we have Kalp of Mana Biosphere Research Trust. So there are some examples we have it, but one of the species level conservation story which uh, I would like to share with you is the, about the sea cow. The sea cow, you may be wondering what is why it is called a sea cow. Very interesting story because India is very good in uh, mythology. So whether you talk about the elephant with Lord Ganesha or whatever, and like that in Dugong also has an excellent mythology. That is, once I visited the Dwarka temple in 1999 when I was actually looking for lesser florican with my uh, teacher, Dr. Ravi Sangren, uh, the late Dr. Ravi Sangren, one of the greatest and finest field ornithologist of our country. So we were actually uh, conducting a survey, then that time I reached uh, to our car temple. So we were talking about uh, these uh, Floricans with the pandits there. And of course, we were also, I was talking about something about a dugong because I was personally interested in aquatic biodiversity. I mean, I was talking with the pandit and I asked him, uh, you have seen this, uh, and this animal that is a uh, dugong I showed him. He said, yes, it is our animal. He very proudly told me. I asked him, what is that? What is the meaning of our animal? Then he told me that he one of the excellent stories. He said that Lord Krishna, uh, due to a curse, uh, in fact, he was cursed by, for his sin is committed earlier that one day his kingdom will be drowned under the sea. So that day has come. And then the cow, you know, the Lord Krishna love cows. So all the cows of the Krishna approached king and prayed uh, Krishna saying that, you people made a mistake. Yes, you are deserved to be punished. What mistake we committed, why should we punish? And then Krishna, because of his love on this cow, and he said that, don't worry, uh, even the kingdom getting drowned, uh, he will still survive under the sea, in the sea as a sea cow. So that is a beautiful uh, story. Uh, narrated by a Pandit in Dwarka, uh, almost now it is about 22 years uh, before I heard that story. So this animal drowned, but actually this are uh, not a cow. They are actually related to elephant actually. This uh, sea cow, the dugong, are related to more relative of elephant than in the cow uh, which we have it in our country. And second thing is why then it is called a sea cow? The, because they feed grasses, any flowering plant under the water in the sea, we call them as a, a grasses, so sea grasses. So this animal feeds some of these sea grasses, that's why we call them as a sea cow, because the cow eats grasses on the land, so we call them a cow. Similarly, we started calling them a sea cow. But in some places, like if you go to Andaman, where people call this animal as a uh, sewer, it means uh, a sea pigs, that's what their people call them that. Such a wonderful animal, we have it uh, in the country, but it's not all over the things. But this animal right now, we have it in uh, Kalpapkach, where the Dwarka temple or the Lord Krishna used to uh, govern that kingdom. Then we have uh, another region in the down south of our country in the east coast, that is the Parkway and the Kalpapmana, where uh, Rameshwaram temple, again, it is a place of Lord Krishna. Rameshwaram is a kalpa of Manar. Manar means a, a Krishna, okay? So it's a kalpa of Krishna. I don't know the relationship between Lord Krishna and the sea cow again. But we do have a population in Andaman. So this is about the Indian uh, distribution of the dugong. But people believe that the dugong used to be there throughout all along the Indian coast. Unfortunately, the most of parts of the dugong population the distribution range got uh, uh, destroyed or got extinct. So we have only a patchy population, three fragmented population of Dugong in our country. And numbers also not more than a 250. Again, this is a guesstimate actually. Uh, so far, we haven't done any estimate on the population of the Dugong. It is a, just a, based on an interview, what we believe that we may be having about 200 to 250 Dugongs in our country. 
this is the animal which occurs then you may ask that in, in there was some report scientific report i can say 40 years before in gulf of manar in one year uh, one season i can say there are about 200 dugong were killed for meat so this was the reported by a scientist in 1970s along the Gulf of Mana. That means we used to have a very good population in the past, but right now the sighting of Dugong became a very, very uh, rare in our country. So what are the reasons for that? The reason, uh, the one of the major reasons for declining of uh, Dugong in our country is uh, fisheries. It is not only in, in India, almost all over the world, because we have about uh, one lakh uh, or under thousands of dugongs and majority of them are living in uh, australian waters and uh, we have that this is the issue the fisheries interface with the dugong is the biggest issue because dugongs are a floater they are not a good swimmer they float and they live in a shallow water uh, nearby shore where sea grasses are there because sea grass required a sunlight to grow the sunlight can penetrate up to seven meter depth very intensively that is the thing where the seagrass we can find out so 10 to um, 7 to 10 meter depth is the uh, of the seagrass in our country uh, that is a seagrass used by the dugong water where the seagrass beds are very very rich in uh, marine biodiversity because many species breeds in the seagrass habitat so fishermen also aware of that so they go and do fishing that area where the dugong's getting entangled now apart from the seagrass eaten by the dugong but the dugong playing a major role in the seagrass habitat in fact uh, our research team could quantify that the economic value of uh, one dugong in per year is almost about uh, two crore rupees because they work like a farmers in the seagrass weeding out the seagrass beds, making sure that the seagrass is more conducive to the more marine species like shales, crustaceans, or uh, cephalopods, whatever. There are many other species, commercially important species to breed. So the dugong do this service free of cost, which is we economically quantified about a two crore rupees every year, every dugong can, is contributing to the humankind, at least in the Indian situation. But these animals are uh, getting killed by deliberately or by incidentally due to the fishing nets. Then we have a, another problems in our country uh, for the dugong is the boat heat. Because as I told you, uh, dugongs are not a good swimmer. They are actually a floater. And uh, when they are going, when the boat comes, they can't actually swim away very fast. It's not like a dolphin uh, kind of animal. So they get stuck. They, they actually hit by the boat. So the animal getting killed. And then the third major problem which we face in our country is the people go for hunting a dugong because some people in our country eat dugong. And uh, as is sure, the culprit is Chinese traditional medicine. People believe that it has some medical property, but unfortunately not like that. It is completely wrong and fake that there is no medical uh, property must be there in a dugong meat because it's like any other meat of any animals, mammals, which you have it. So it's a false thing, but people kill it uh, for a meat. They used to kill, and this poaching is the one issues we are facing it. Then there are several other common problems as usual for any marine systems, whether it is a sand dredging, coastal development activity, pollution, a climate change, bottom trawling, all those problems are actually putting pressure on the dugong, as well as other animals which occurs in the marine system. So what's happened in the past, because Tugong got attracted by the uh, forest manager also. You know very well that in the Indian forest system, uh, our officers are well trained and are extremely good in managing the terrestrial uh, wildlife in our country. They have been doing a, such a wonderful job. But unfortunately, they are very poor in managing the coastal marine system. They were not trained in those days. But now only we initiated training the officers uh, in even managing the marine biodiversity in our country, which we started uh, uh, more or less eight years before. Now it became a regular program there. But what's happened, the Tamil Nadu, Andaman, Nicobar, and Gujarat, they initiated a several conservation program to take care of the dugong. Uh, it, I'm talking about 10, 15 years before. So for example, Tamil Nadu was the pioneer because they had a such 
biodiversity paradise hotspot of our country, like Gulf of Manar Marine National Park, where they are given a lot of protection and using the UNDP JEP, where this Gulf of Manar biosphere is a trust was initiated. This is a trust created to take care of the marine biodiversity along with the community which is living in the coastal region. It got some good result in the field also. And then there is a Daminoda Biodiversity Conservation and a Greening Project. With the support of these two programs, they initiated several programs. They have been educating a people, creating a lot of awareness, strengthening the protection to take care of the dugong in that state. And then Andaman Nicobar uh, used one of the very innovative new scheme of the Ministry of Environment that was launched in 2009. That is called the Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitat by the Ministry of Environment Government of India. So with their support, uh, they actually started uh, studying the species, conducting good research, excellent research. I can say that Dr. Eldrika was there, uh, and uh, she was uh, started observing, maybe the first study in, in India, we initiated observing the animal underwater. They mapped the seagrass and they identified a thread, and then they started uh, concerning the species based on the research finding which they got in. Then coming to the Gujarat, where we have this story of the meat, but uh, used to be having excellent population, but uh, right now the population is uh, lowest among the other three places uh, compared to other three places because of huge pollution and a lot of fishing pressure. Although the people uh, in Gujarat don't eat the dugong meal, but uh, indirectly they are responsible for bringing down the population because the fishing intensity is very high. Moreover, the pollution is the big problem. The water, high turbidity, apart from a pollution, naturally also the turbidity level in the Gujarat coast is very, very high. So because of that, the light pen don't penetrate much deeper. So because of that, the seagrasses are not growing a better. So the population of the seagrass has declined naturally, the Ugang population also. Again. But again, they started with the IGMA program. Uh, they started creating awareness and started mapping that area and they strengthened the protection. This was the things they have been doing it. But all these programs, although they've given us some good result, but not enough to bring back the population uh, from, uh, from the extinction. And also, apart from the conservation, as a federal government, what we did it, the species is protected legally. It is like a tiger. So anybody kill a tiger, what punishment he or she get it? It's the same punishment then even kills a dugong also will get it. So legally, this is one of the highest protected species of our country. And then uh, we also have a protected area that takes care of the some of the habitat of the dugong, like Kalpapmana National Park, Kalpapkach National Park, Mahatma Gandhi National Park in Andaman, John Sirani Marine National Park. And these are the four important marine national parks that takes care of or conserve the habitat of the dugong in our country. Very interestingly, uh, two years before, uh, Ministry of Panorama and come up with a, its a third national wildlife action plan. This is the Bible of our wildlife management or wildlife conservation of our country. This third action plan, the uniqueness is the first time they actually given a lot of importance to coast and marine biodiversity. There is an exclusive chapter. I was very fortunate to be part of this committee because I was assisting the committee uh, in many way, drafting uh, some of the uh, actions. So. I requested the committee member, please consider to do something for Marin, which we ignored in the last two policies. And the committee meant so kind and that is it's very important. So they come up with a lot of good conservation suggestion. So hopefully in the future, the marine biodiversity in our country will get more extra. And the Ministry of Environment is very much keen on actually strengthening the conservation program in the marine coastal system because we know it has a lot of lot of uh, ecological role the marine biodiversity plays plus economic value of. So we do have the dugong has about uh, spread policy in 40 countries. So we classified the entire dugong range into the uh, five regions. One region is called uh, South Asia, where South Asia India is the leading agency where the dugong population also occurs in uh, uh, Sri Lanka. We believe that the dugong in Indian that is a park said probably going to the uh, Park Bay of uh, Sri Lanka and coming back, but it, that yet to be proved by scientifically. Uh, then with these things, what's happened, the Ministry of Environment come up with a national level species recovery plan because there was a convention on migratory species. So you know that uh, recently India proudly and successfully hosted the 
top plan of the CMS, the Conference of Parties in Gandhi Nagar. That was one of the most successful international conventions of our country. We organized successfully. So this the same convention also takes care of the uh, Dugam conservation all over the world with the support of 40 country, India also one of the country. With the support of CMS convention secretariat and then government of India, the experts in, in India jointly we developed a, a national recovery plan. The national recovery plan has a four important objective. One is recover the species, recover their habitat. When we want to do these two, this should be done with the involvement of stakeholder. That means it should be in participatory. We can't conserve the dugong without help of the community. That is a realization one must have it. So we understand of the involvement of especially the fishermen. So that is the third of the involve them how to make sure that the community is actually taking care of this species. Then the fourth objective is we realize that there is a huge shortage of capacity of our, in our country who manage the coastal marine system, yes, including the taking care of the dugam. So the capacity building was the fourth objective. So we set these four objectives, we have developed a national conservation action plan, but we want to even this recovery plan should be in a consultative uh, mode. So what they, we did it, then we approached the state government. We organized the stakeholders with each state. So in Tamino, Andaman, and Gujarat. So we called the we all important stakeholders, the local community. We had a very high in that to work on this action, whether it will suit for your state or not, or anything else new, you can add it. Then there was a, a suggestion from all the three states that Yes, we have been already doing a lot of work. Uh, why don't you integrate your national program with the already ongoing program? Uh, I realized that it's very important and the excellent suggestion. So we integrated all the ongoing program of the state forest department with our national pro recovery program. Then we actually reworked on our objective. We added a lot of conservation act and then we went to the field. And then we realized that the coastal system, uh, which are very sensitive, bordering with the neighboring countries, and also realized that uh, this is the animal lives in the sea, vast sea, and uh, monitoring this animal, it's not uh, that much easy. If you want to assess the population, monitor their habitat, then we, re we realize that the importance of the involvement of Indian Navy and Indian Coast Guard, of course, Marine Police also. So then we started talking with them. We were really lucky, uh, I can say. All our stakeholders are very much keen on helping the Dugam. So Navy, as well as the Coast Guard, and then Marine Police in, in Gujarat, Andaman, and Taminad, also all three came forward and they were actually say that, okay, whatever help we can do it, we'll do that. But again, they required some kind of a capacity building to how to monitor, how to report all those things. And then when you're releasing these things, apart from a Navy, Coast Guard, and then Marine Police, we also understood the importance of involvement of State Fisheries Department, because they are very good liaison with the uh, local community, fishermen community, then the Forestry Department. So we started involving the Fisheries Department, Fisheries officials in all three states, and then we started working on this. Uh, what we did it so far, uh, when we started three years before this program, and the first step was we identified the critical dugong habitat in the country, whether it is in the Gulf of Kutch, where the near the Dwarka region seems to be the hotspot of dugong in the area. And the, similarly in Gulf of Mannar and Park Bay and Andaman Nicobar Island. First step was we identified so that we can focus, we initiate the conservation program first there. Then everybody asked this question that what is the status of dugong in our country? whether it's a 200, 250, or 2,000, whatever. So initially, we started working on a traditional way of analyzing that. We conducted an interview with the fishermen. We come up with a sum of estimate about 250, 200 to 250 individual. Then people need some scientific uh, research on it. Then we started using a boat survey. In the boat survey also, we did something interesting here. What we did it, we used to use a 
large number of fishing boats, about 50 boats, 20 to 50 boats, and means 20 to 50 fishermen are, are, are involved in the surveying. Each boat is about having a three fishermen. That means even if 50 means 150 people were involved in the survey. That is what idea. So the fishermen are aware what we are doing it. In that, they are also involved in the monitoring program. But unfortunately, we couldn't get uh, any good result from this boat survey. But we know the area survey is the only method where we can estimate the dugong population. It was proved everywhere all over the world. But unfortunately, uh, doing aerial survey in Indian coast is a little bit difficult. That's why we took help of the Navy and Coast Guard, which they have been doing it and monitoring it. But what we then we tried that we started using a drone. Uh, then drone uh, is actually helping us a lot. And uh, we could see the population, good population and demand. Now we are having a feeling that even in a Gujarat, the Dugong population may be uh, bigger than what we earlier thought. We earlier thought 10 to 15, but now we believe that about 30 to 50 Dugans may be there in uh, uh, Gujarat coast also, because we could identify the uh, excellent seagrass beds, and those seagrass beds was actually fed by the Dugong, because we could see the feeding trail of the Dugong in that area, which is very intensive feeding trail. It gives some information that, that we having a better population in uh, Gujarat coast also. So we have been started working on a survey survey. And then what we did it, we created about thousand members of volunteer network with largely by fishermen and uh, divers, and those kind of people who go to the sea very often dive in uh, the sea. So we, uh, we requested those volunteers that whenever you go, you dive, if you come across any dugong, click pictures and send to us. Interestingly, we started receiving the pictures from our volunteer network. Now we are making a, trying to identify those and individuals uh, because there are some very where we are the population using this particular technique. And also our, our network because a lot of dugongs used to stand along the coast, but unfortunately we don't have much data on that because nobody reports, very difficult to getting reported. But because of the dugong voluntary network, now all the dugong standings are now getting recorded. That's something amazing so that we'll get some idea what's happening, when it, the problems are coming, when the most dugongs are ending, where they are standing, then so that we can pinpoint the a location which has a more threat. So that's what uh, we have been doing it. And this network is extremely working very well in that area. And then recently, because uh, we never thought that there are new kind of problems in our country. We thought for well, fisheries related issues, boat strike, pollution, all threat to that. But we also found a host in it. When the people do fishing, uh, sometimes what will happen, their fishing net get uh, cut. When the cut net, they won't remove it. They leave it in the sea. When they leave it on the sea, these nets go and settle down on the sea grasses. When the sea grasses they settle down, these the dugong used to go and feed those uh, sea grasses. Sometimes they get entangled into the host net. Once they get entangled, they cannot come out. So these animals always move forward. They won't come backward and then come escape. They don't know how to come backward and move away, escape from the net. So they keep on moving forward. So keep on getting entangled, entangled, and then they get dry, uh, drowned. Then as fixation, they getting killed. So these are new problems we uh, noticed during our uh, the last two years. Then then we started working with the uh, forest department, marine police, coast guard, and then we also with the help of the college student. Now we are started removing these uh, debris, especially the host net. Uh, from the seagrass bed so that the dugongs comes and feed so don't get in, entangled by the net. That's the one thing we initiated that is come in the latter stage. And also my team in Tamil Nadu Andaman done an extremely good study on the other marine pollutions. So now our volunteer need to work with the help of the forest department because we trained the forest people also. Now they're removing the those marine debris from the critical habitat of the dugong. And then very interesting things, which I want to come back to the Pandita Dwarka, the genetic study. Uh, we haven't done any genetic study so far in our country, except the two a small study done by the CMFR in the past with using a two individual, but we got more than 20 individual samples. And what we found that one good news that 
our research team who are working on a genetics led by dr samrat uh, and uh, srinivas what they found that uh, the population seems to be better in india as per genetic at least uh, they said that the diversity genetic diversity is good so we no need to worry because there is a some kind of genetic exchange is happening probably we are unable to locate the population that might be the reason but still the genetically the population is good and also they said that the indian population seems to be ancestor population on the world and some of the genes are matching with the ancestor dugong population in australia now the question is whether the dugong originated from indian sea and then radiated through either side one from australia another side from africa whether the dwarka pandit was correct we don't know but it looks like that our indian uh, dugongs are slightly unique in nature because it is a it seems to be an ancestor dugong population uh and this is the program uh, we started getting a very good research but when initially when we approach even in the earlier conservation effort uh they have been telling the fisherman that don't kill this animal which is a protected species it gives a lot of benefit to the human being all those things but the poor fisherman wouldn't listen to that because they need money and these guys are very really poor people so what we did it we also went and approached the fisherman please don't kill them because we know the fisherman are really good hearted people uh, once they convince they will really give their life also so but again they were reluctant the poaching was continuing people are killing animal killing in sense yearly about average 10 dugong used to be killed every year in india uh, before 2017 i can say and uh, then what we did it we realized the school children uh, of the fisherman community are getting dropped in after eighth standard because of the lack of money lack of support fund support and they are also getting into their pair joining the parents to getting into uh, fisheries related uh, livelihood so what we did it we targeted those school going children of the fishermen uh, now we started supporting their education so we launched a very innovative program called dugong scholarship program so every month we pay some fellowship that's a 500 rupees per month per students we pay for a two years so that the students uh, education getting uh, supported by this money and uh, then what we we got doing it in last 3 years what we found that uh, the school dropout was significantly reduced so that's amazing research we got it so we could bring down the school dropout almost 98% uh, they are continuing the study and now another interesting things and we used to conduct a nature camp for this uh, student we call them as a dugong ambassador actually this dugong ambassadors we invited for it once in two months we organize a camp uh, through these kids we tell the story to the villages don't kill don't take care of the marine birds all the thing and then through these children we approach their parents emotionally i can say but we got amazing result amazing result that the fishermen community now full all heartedly started supporting this program i will tell you that what kind of support they extended now are extending now but this is one of the wonderful program got a two benefit one is it helped us conserving the dugong plus other marine biodiversity because people rescued a, a sea turtle also and they stopped collecting Ill- protected marine species like a sea cucumber all those thing and the second important thing is these children are uh, able to continue the study because we were supporting the poor fishermen kids and uh, they uh, they are actually they said they are getting improved now and then apart from that we also started educating creating awareness among the uh, public who are living along the coastal area so so far we got to educate about 30000 children school children and plus about 10000 uh, people uh, elder people living in that coastal habitat very close to the dugong were actually educated created our we used the various tools including involving the local ngos who are very good in uh, communication and communicating with the local community whether it's a dance program musical program drama all those things we also used our climate change program the train climate change express and uh, we worked on it and then capacity building program that is one of the very very important program because we have to build our capacity so we organized several orientation and training program for 
Coast Guard and Navy, and then most importantly, our Forest Department, Marine Police, Fisheries Officer. Because these are the frontline staff we take care of the uh, dugong and its habitat. So we given the scuba diving training, and so far we could train about 250 staff, whether it's a senior officers or a frontline staff in together, they were actually trained in conserving the or managing the marine biodiversity wherever they are posted. So that is another achievement. We did it, but we have to go very long way because we have to train many more uh, frontline staff who are working in the marine environment in the country. And then we also developed various uh, educational material. And not only that, that the education materials are actually written and prepared, developed by uh, my research team, my the project team, which are working with me. And also we started using the already published information with their permission. So there are many uh, education materials uh, we reproduced and revisited and reproduced. And then we are using those education materials for creating awareness in the community. This is what the result I want to share with you. You can see that the dugong is actually released by the fishermen. So once upon a time, the fishermen used to go for hunting or poaching the dugong because each dugong may fetch them as some good money because uh, people eat illegally. So those fishermen, poor fishermen, were now started voluntarily releasing the dugong, which they entangled in the net. That is thanks to our, the awareness program, scholarship program, not only by this project, even the program initiated by the State Forest Department, even the two decades before. All collective effort, I must say here. And because all our programs we executed in the field with the help of the Forest Department, uh, frontline stop. That is a very important thing. They are very helpful, very supportive. We are helping each other. We are working on this program. And uh, so far, we could release the 11 dugong which are entangled in the fishing net. What we do it, we don't give much money. The, we provide some incentive to those people who rescue and release that. But we honor them in a public gathering. We'll organize a big uh, function in the district where the senior most forest officers and other collector whoever attend that, they felicitate these fishermen and their photo carried in the next day daily news. So they become as a hero in the region. That people really love it. They don't bother about uh, money. Although we give small money uh, to compensate their fishing net, but still the money is not issue here. The pride, which is important. So most important things which we realize that we don't know whether the population of dugong increased in our country or not but we are 100 percent sure that the illegal killing of the dugong almost stopped with there it was there one or two but not the 10 individual in the last two years only one poaching we could record it so that was the success of this program that we could convince the people not killing the dugong there and then we are also now the government of Tamil Nadu is more proactive they want to, uh, we identified one of the important dugong habitat in the Pakway region and, uh, and the Terminal Forest Department considering to declare that region as a, a conservation reserve, probably the first dugong conservation reserve of the country and the government of India is working on it. And then we also, now that dugong habitat in, in India has been recognized as the important marine mammal area. So, I must thank to the colleague Dr. Dibani Sutter. Myself and Dibani were working on it with the uh, IUCN Marine Mammal uh, Specialist Group and Marine Protected Areas Group. And we could uh, get this recognition that the, all these regions are getting important. So it gives another flower to uh, Madugan Conservation. It's, strength, it's going to strengthen this program. But this is our teamwork. It is not that uh, the Wildlife Institute of India or a Ministry of Environment or the uh, State Forest Department. You can see that the program is supported by the camp authority. So you know that we have been using the tool of protection, but uh, we want the government to now change the tool of protection mode into tool of uh, recovery mode. So when they are talking about recovery, we need a huge money. So we will give the money. So the Kampa Authority came forward to recover some of the endangered species in our country. So they, I was very happy that they chosen a dugong from the marine environment. 
So I'm thankful to the camp authority and the Ministry of Environment, Forest, Climate Change, their support. And then we exit the program with the help of the State Forest Department because this is a, their program. We are technically helping them. All three chief wildlife warden are very, very supportive to this uh, Dugong Recovery Program, Indian Navy and Indian Coast Guard. These are the implementing agency, but we are working with uh, several national institutions, NGOs who are helping us. And of course, the CMS Dugong MU, which is located in Abu Dhabi, helping us a lot. But the most importantly, this fishing community. It is, this is, after all, this is their animal, and uh, they now understood that the importance of taking care of the dugong. Hopefully, it will continue. But uh, doing this program, I myself had a very big uh, a group of people working in Wildlife Institute of India, my colleague, Dr. Johnson and uh, Dr. Anand, who are really supporting me to exit in this program, along with about uh, 20 researchers. Uh, there are extremely good, highly dedicated research team, field team. They're working with the community, working in, with the Dugong in the, and they're doing amazing job. So this is what the Dugong Conservation Program. So the Dugong Conservation Program, given a one more lesson to the country that the people participation is very critical. If you talk with the people, people will help you to conserve the wildlife. That is another change things we understood. And then wildlife conservation must benefit the local community. Again, that another lesson we learned from the Dugong conservation. But again, this is the initial stage. We had to go a very long way uh, to really achieve our goal. So in future, we are planning to actually locate all the critical population of the Dugong in India and are planning to see whether this population moving between Sri Lanka and India, we are thinking of using a satellite tracking. And of course, uh, we need more support from everybody to take care of the species because as I told you, one dugong can contribute two crore rupees to the humankind in India. That is the value of the dugong. So thank you all. And with this, I finish it. I thank you all.